from Force 13 HQ and from our contributors from around the world. This is June the 2nd, 2018. Hello and welcome to the latest Tropical Weather Bulletin for June the 2nd. There's no cyclones active yet and three invests currently in the area around the world somewhere. Well, let's find out where they are. Uh, you probably already know if you've been following in the West Pacific, in fact, is where all three of the invests are right now. And these are the percentage chances that we're giving them. Uh, 60% on Invest 99W, uh, which is in the South China Sea. Uh, that one has probably the highest chance of development out of all three of them, really. You've also got Invest 90W, which is sort of in the middle. Uh, that's got a much lower chance because Invest 91W is probably going to get the action and become the cyclone. We'll obviously be watching this closely. It's an interesting dynamic and obviously a lot of competition in that area. Uh, you'll probably see it better um, in that sense on the satellite imagery shortly. Um, also, elsewhere it's only the East Pacific. There's an area of interest that's up to 50% chance in the next five days, 0% in the next two days that we're also watching. Uh, let's go back, let's take a look at the satellite views right now. This is what the East Pacific looks like. Um, you can't see what that system will end up being, it's way over to the east. Uh, so you can't see anything on this view, it's looking pretty quiet. You can see the tropical zone there, all those thunderstorms, they're still at very low latitude. None of them are likely um, to ever become anything until it gets a little bit higher up in latitude. There's a little system off to the east there, but that's not going to be... Uh, of any interest. Uh, the Atlantic perhaps, hopefully all this imagery is up to date, it looks like it is. So this is the latest out of the Atlantic, there's a very curious big band extending all the way from the Lesser Antilles out across the ocean, but uh, apart from looking interesting, it really doesn't mean anything in terms of tropical development. There's also a close-up of the Gulf of Mexico on your right-hand side, uh, showing a pretty quiet gulf right now, and some thunderstorms going on over the United States, mainly in the central and eastern part, but one or two over Texas Way as well, by the looks of things. West Pacific, then, is where all the interesting part of the action is right now you can see all three systems here it is a bit of a disorganized mess i have to say uh, but as you can see 99w on the left hand side in the south china sea probably looks the best uh, moving slowly towards the northwest at this time by the looks of things and slowly headed towards the coast of vietnam now the models are undecided on whether it's actually going to make landfall on central vietnam or not uh, we'll, we'll catch up with that shortly uh, I don't think it's necessary to look at any of the other areas at this time, so let's look at those floaters. Uh, you can see all three West Pacific systems here on the floaters, and all three of them could develop into tropical cyclones. Uh, JMA haven't listed any of them yet, but I expect that will happen soon. You can see all three of them. I wonder if they all have circulations at this point. 90W in the middle uh, probably has the best one at this time, and the broadest one as well. Uh, in terms of organization, it's pretty much a race to see which one will get ready first. Obviously, we'll be tracking all three of them very closely indeed. Let's go somewhere else then. Sea service temperatures. I think this just shows the world map. Yep, this should be the latest too. Temperatures in the Western Pacific, you can see here, are in the 30 Celsius range. Uh, except where 91W is slightly lower there, maybe 29, but certainly warm enough for all three systems. East Pacific as well, there's a little area there of 30 degree waters that's bubbling up now as well. So that's going to be, that usually is the main development region for the first month or two of the season. First two or three months even into early August. So that's usually what we look for. In the Atlantic there you can see uh, Alberto, I don't think has done too much for sea surface temperatures. Still around 28 degrees in a few places in the Gulf, obviously cooler in the east slightly because Alberto passed over, uh, but that's not too far from normal anyway. Uh, but a pretty cool Atlantic, especially further east, we've got at the moment. Okay then, let's go to the forecast, which is here somewhere. This is what we're looking at over the next few days in each basin. This is the Atlantic. Uh, you can see how not too much is expected, one or two extra tropical cyclones going out over the sea. Uh, but looking into the Caribbean, 
Uh, again, a little bit breezy in some central areas there, uh, but really very little going on into the coming week. Um, so any signs of our next storm are not forthcoming just yet, although some long-range models are suggesting a little inkling or two, which we won't be looking at in this update. Here's the specific, and you may have noticed just at the end of that loop, uh, something was developing to the west, or maybe during, during that loop. I didn't quite see it on that just then, but you'll see it coming into the right-hand side of the image, and this is what the NHC is hinting at. As we come into, when is it, Tuesday into Wednesday? I think there it is appearing now, yes. And that will be the first named storm of the season, 50% chance of that happening. The GFS at the moment, this is what we're looking at, is predicting Category 1 hurricane out of that as it moves off towards the west, harmlessly out to sea. West Pacific, uh, you can see, first of all, it's 99W that develops into a tropical storm and then a Category 1 typhoon, according to GFS model, maybe even getting on to Category 2. A brief landfall, by the looks of things, and then back out and over the South China Sea into Hainan Island as well. And then you've got that other system. I don't know which invest it is, but it looks like a very small tropical storm. I think that's 91W into next week, uh, making two landfalls in the Philippines. And 99W hanging about there as well before making a final landfall in Vietnam. Looks like steering currents might get quite weak later on. Indian Ocean is looking very quiet. There are one or two hints that maybe there might have been a new tropical cyclone in the Bay of Bengal uh, this coming week. Uh, but at the moment it doesn't look like anything significant is on the radar although quite notably there's some uh, significant uh, uh, winds off the coast of the Horn of Africa they're getting towards gale force but that's not tropical related so that was the Indian Ocean and the models uh, here's what the wind shear looks like in the Western Pacific right now you can see Let's see, 99W over there in the South China Sea, very low amounts of wind shear and decreasing, look at that. So all it needs to do is get itself sorted structurally and it, it will be on its way. So that is interesting to see. HWRF usually, um, usually predicts these storms with some optimism, but I have, I have to say it's saying uh, quite weak on this one. I think we'll see that shortly as well. Uh, further east, those other two Inves 91W has the better chance with wind shear. And as I alluded to, I just want to show you this. The uh, HWRF for the 19, for 99W uh, shows a very weird track, uh, just like the GFS, I suppose. Um, and a weak storm, that was in the 12 Zulu run. 18 Zulu is probably going to be due very soon anyway, but that's what it said at 12. Uh, but you get the idea, pretty much a west northwestward um, track towards the coast of Vietnam and it could affect the whole coast of Vietnam and southernmost China. Uh, Rao also shows the situation and the, indeed the intensity guidance. Now I don't think that factored in the latest GFS model which is calling for a typhoon all of a sudden. CTCX had it getting to nearly category 3 in the medium range there towards 120 hours. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. And RAM, what have they got for us right now? Yes, something similar there to uh, showing that does, I think, have the latest GFS, does it? Not quite sure on that. Uh, but you can see there the divergence between the models. Uh, and you can also see why they differ because it shows w how much wind shear, that, wind, wind shear they all predict and the SSTs and the uh, mid-level relative humidity which are all factors that will influence the storm's intensity. Uh, you can see there I think uh, HWRF in the later term on days 4 and 5 has the least amount of wind shear. Uh, GFS actually calls for more later on uh, which is interesting. Not too much we can tell from that, however. Well, let's go now. Basically, just two more things to tidy up. 2018 to date in the West Pacific looks like this. Uh, we're pretty much on track with what Force 13 forecasted in early April. Uh, it, if we're going to follow the 2018 forecast to the letter, the next storm is due soon. But it looks like we may well have two, so we will be going ahead of schedule, at least for the time being. Uh, still significantly behind 2015 as you can see there and that will probably remain the case for the foreseeable well you never know 
uh, at least until towards the end of the season when the forecast calls for us to get above 2015 despite all of its activity um, but we'll see what kinds of storms we actually churn up of course it only takes one uh, running slightly ahead of average as well on this day I could only find four today because uh, it was pretty much uh, rushed together uh, two old typhoons, one in 1903, a typhoon struck the Philippines, first made landfall in Samar, went through the Visayas region and then on to Vietnam. It killed 2,003 people, I think most of them were in the Philippines, not all. 1927, another typhoon made landfall in Taiwan. Uh, in 1951, a hurricane made landfall near Acapulco, Mexico. And in 2010, Cyclone Fet peaked as a Category 4 in the Arabian Sea. Uh, also on this day in 2007, Tropical Storm Barry was arriving as a weak system in Florida, Western Florida. And uh, tomorrow, the, the depression, this, uh, today the depression for Alberto formed, I think 1982's Alberto, and became a named storm on June the 3rd. Well, that's it for now from this tropical weather update, and here's Force 13's outlets. You can visit the website force13.com with the latest. You can also find our YouTube page, search Force 13, all in text, subscribe if you haven't already. You can also find our Facebook page under the same name, and we're on Twitter, our handle at Force 13. If you'd like to follow us or send us a tweet, we'll respond. You can also uh, follow Force 13 on Skype at our account and my personal account on Discord, Fool 13 at extension 9094 for tropical weather chat.